Hi, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today, we're going to be drawing one of my absolute favorite birds. This is called the Western Scrub Jay. Well, actually, they changed the name just recently, and now they call him the California Scrub Jay. We have an oak tree in our backyard, and we get so many of these scrub jays, and they are noisy. Can you hear them? So they are... <laughs> So they are waiting for me to go put peanuts in the branches. I put peanuts in the branches. They come down every day. They take those peanuts. They fly off. They hide them in the nooks and crannies of our oak trees. Listen. <laughs> He's like saying, I'm hungry. Where are my peanuts? And then they eat them later in the wintertime when it's cold. Okay. I'm going to go feed those guys so they'll quiet down so I can teach you how to draw our Western California scrub day. Okay, let's get ready to do our beautiful picture of our California scrub jay. Now, a couple of things that you might wanna consider before we start. What kind of medium, meaning art materials, do you want to draw with today? I am going to be using some watercolors. I'm also gonna be using some crayons. I'm gonna be using both in my picture. I'm gonna need a Sharpie marker, a pencil, and an eraser. I use a magic rub. Now, if you are gonna be using watercolor, you're gonna to wanna to use a heavier weight watercolor piece of paper or multimedia paper. If you're gonna be doing your picture with colored pencils, you could just use regular copy paper that comes out of your printer. So you're gonna first gather up the items that you need for our lesson today, a pencil, an eraser, a Sharpie marker, some type of paper. So I'm gonna be using watercolor paper. Now, if you are gonna be using watercolor, then you're gonna need also a napkin for blotting your paintbrush on. And you're also going to need some water. So I keep my water in a little jar or a bowl or a cup, something that doesn't tip over very easily. So I'm gonna have you pause your video, go ahead and gather those items up and meet me back here when you are ready. Welcome back. Let's get ready to draw our beautiful California scrub jay. The only thing you're gonna do right now is just get your paper into a horizontal position, which is long. We're gonna find the center with our finger and make a small dot in the middle. This is gonna help us balance out the size of our scrub jay. So first thing, you're gonna notice that the scrub jay's got an oval body, a circle for the head, and a very long tail. The tail, as a matter of fact, is almost the exact same length as the body. That's how long his tail is. So if you put a pencil on the end here and you measure it, and then you take that pencil and move it right here, you'll see that the body and the tail are almost exactly the same length. So we need to make sure that when we're drawing our oval for the body, that we have enough room for that tail at the end. Now I'm gonna be making my oval on a slight angle that's kind of pointing up to this corner. So instead of making it this way, laying down, I'm gonna tilt it slightly toward that upper corner. So I'm gonna take my pencil and make an oval like this, not too big, not too dark. You know, we're gonna be erasing all of our pencil lines later. And then I'm gonna be placing the head right here at the end. So I'm gonna make a circle right here for the head. And the next part we're going to draw is a line that comes out of the back for the tail. So the tail is just an extension that comes from the head. If you drew a straight line that goes right through the body here, right through the head, all the way to the end, the tail continues this direction. Now, however long you make that tail, it needs to be about the same length as your body. So you can just kind of use your fingers and measure to make sure it's about the same length. Once we have done that, the next part is to move on to starting to do the details. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the head to the body. So I'm just going to extend the head right through to the body, just matching this line here. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to extend to the body. And then I'm going to move up here to draw his beak. Now, depending upon which direction you want your bird looking, you can make the beak pointing up like he's reaching up, like looking up toward the sky. Um, in this photograph, he's facing this direction. So I'm going to make his beak right here, and I'm just going to draw a long line. This is going to be the center line right here that separates the top beak from the bottom beak. You want to make sure that that beak is 
as long as his head. They are exactly the same length. So if I put my pencil right here on the end of his beak and then all the way to the tip of his beak and I pick up my pencil and then I set it on the head, you'll see that they're exactly the same length. So there's the tip of his beak that connects to his face and here's the tip of his beak where my fingernail is. And then if I pick that up and I move it over here, you see they're exactly the same length. So what you wanna do is whatever size you made that head, whether it's two fingers or three fingers or two and a half fingers, you want it to match. Mine's about two and a half fingers. You want the beak to match. I need to make my beak a little longer. So two and a half fingers, two and a half fingers. Now yours might be three fingers or one finger. It just depends on how large you made it. You just want those to match. So when we are looking at the scrub jay's beak, one thing I want you to notice on the Western scrub jay or the California scrub jay, they have a very different looking beak than some of the other jays. And the reason why is their beak is wider. So what we're gonna be doing is making a point here and then we're gonna bring this back and make it a little bit wider up here. Now, the reason why the scrub jay, uh, the Western scrub jay has a wider beak is because it predominantly eats acorns, acorns which grow in oak trees, which is what I have in my backyard. And in order for them to eat that acorn, they have to crack that, that acorn with their beak. So they have to have a wide beak because they literally hold it in their feet and then they take their beak and they tap it until they could crack a hole into that acorn to get the little nut out of the inside. All right, so once we have made our little beak, then I'm going to extend that beak a little bit farther into the face. Do you notice it kind of goes into a spacer? So I'm going to zoom in so that you can see that his beak extends all the way into his face here. It doesn't stop right here. So we want to extend the beak and then I'm just going to draw a line that connects here and a line that connects here. So now their beak looks a little bit more realistic. All right, moving out now, let's zoom out a little bit farther. So now we're going to now go down and we're going to round out his stomach a little bit. So I'm going to kind of chubby up his tummy right here because his stomach is a little chubbier. And we're going to move on to drawing his tail. Now I want you to notice that in this photograph here, his tail looks really skinny, but if he was to tilt his tail slightly, you would see all the other feathers behind. So right now it looks like this, but actually he has many more tail feathers. They're just not showing in this photograph. So we're gonna fan his tail out a little bit longer. And by the way, make sure that you have a nice long tail. So I'm gonna start up here at his back and I'm gonna connect it down to the end of the tail feather here and round it. So that's tail feather number one. I'm just gonna add a few more that connect back to this point here for just a few extra tail feathers so that he doesn't just have one tail feather. You can draw as many as you want. Just make sure they kind of come to a point there. All right, from here, we're now going to go in and design his legs. So first part, You'll notice his legs are at the back of his body and his legs are different than our legs. Our legs, our knees bend forward. In a bird's legs, they bend backwards, almost like our elbows on our arms. So we need to make sure that when we're drawing his legs, we bend them the opposite direction that our knees go. So his knees are actually on the back side here. And if you're thinking about the way to draw it, I like to think about the number seven. So I'm gonna come here kind of uh, toward the back of his body. I'm going to draw a short line and then I'm going to bring that line forward like this. So see how it looks kind of like the number seven. I'm going to add a second line parallel to it doing exactly the same thing as the first line. So that's leg number one. You can see it's kind of hidden behind the photograph here and then the leg on the back side I'm going to do the same thing and since it's in the back I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. So I'm going to make this line a little bit shorter than this one and then bring it forward and same thing I did on the other one. And then I'm gonna bring it this way and bring it forward here. And you wanna make this leg actually slightly shorter in the front. Also, this one should be a little bit longer because it's in front of this one. All right, now next comes the toes. So on this photograph, it may 
kind of not really show up under the camera, but he's got three toes here in the front and then he has one back toe in the back side. So he has three toes here, you can't see them. And then he has one on the back. So I'm gonna start right here on the back and just draw a little hook for his back toe. And I started that from this line and then we're gonna to start to draw his front toe. So I'm gonna come right here from the front and I'm gonna curve it up and around. It's toe number uh, one on this side. And then I'm gonna skip a space here and draw another curved line that matches. And then I'm gonna draw one more. Now the first thing I'm going to do is connect this toe to this back toe. And I'm just gonna be doing it by making kind of a curved rainbow shape. So from here, I'm just gonna curve it up, around, and then hook it back. So that's toe number one. Now toe number two, I'm gonna make it a little longer, is gonna come back and then just kind of get hidden behind that toe. And then this last toe is just gonna kind of come up and around and get hidden behind that toe. Now, by the way, if you don't like your feet, you can change them later. You can kind of cover them up. You could draw a branch in front of them. So I'm gonna do the same thing again, back toe, front toe, and then we're gonna draw one more toe here and one more toe here. The first toe is going to be the one in the front. So I'm gonna bring it around. It's gonna to connect to that back toe. Second one's gonna come around and get hidden behind the front toe. And then the third toe is gonna to get hidden behind this toe. All right, feet are done. Now we're gonna move on to his head. So I'm going to make sure that he is a little fluffier. So I'm gonna round out his chin here. And you'll notice that he has a little bump right here where his head connects to his beak. So I'm gonna make a little bump right there. And then this is kind of a curved, smooth line that comes all the way back. And he has two sections of feathers. He's got this blue section here, and then he has this little patch of gray feathers. This is important because this is what makes him uh, his coloring be a Western scrub jay or California scrub jay, this section of gray here. Because uh, other jays, like a stellar jay, they're solid blue. They don't have this patch of gray. So what we want to do is make sure that we add that patch. But first, let's move on to figuring out the rest of his features of his face. So he needs an eye. Now his eye, if you notice, is right up here in the upper part of his beak. It's straight back from there. So right in this section, right back here, we're gonna make a dot where we wanna place his eye. And the first thing I'm going to do is draw a circle for the eye. I'm gonna draw the eyelid. Now, you can make him more cartoon, like if you wanna make his eyes cute and cartoony, you can do that, or you can make him more realistic. So if I'm making a realistic eye, I'm just gonna kind of outline that circle like this. And then I'm gonna leave a shiny light. So let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing for his eye. You'll see that he's got a little sparkle in his eye right there. So I'm gonna add a little half circle right up here. And we can leave a little half circle down there. And then when we color this in later with our marker, then his eye is gonna look very natural. And then the next part is you'll notice he has a plume of feathers around his eye that almost looks like he has a bandit mask on. So what we're going to do is trace kind of a curved shape around his eye and then bring it back to his beak. So I'm just kind of copying what I see there. It doesn't have to be exact. He has a section of feathers underneath his chin that is white, and then he has a section of feathers that are blue. So I wanna make sure that I trace this area right here, and I match this all the way down to here. So this area is gonna stay white, and then this area up here will be blue. So now I'm just gonna take my eraser, and rub it right there, cleaning up that little spot. So this will be his white feathers. Underneath his chin, 
I'm going to erase this part right here where these circles and ovals meet because we don't need that anymore. I'm also going to erase this line that runs right down the middle of his body. I don't need this anymore. So go ahead and erase that. Okay, the next part that we're going to draw is this section of blue. Now, this is important. This is called his necklace. This feather section right here that's blue, that's called his necklace. So we want to make a curved line here and a little necklace that runs around his neck. So I hold this right here. I'm just going to add a little swoop of a curve right here. And then I'm going to bring it down along his chest. Then later, we can color that with our paint. Now let's move on to his wing. So look at his wing. His wing comes right here where his shoulder is and it just swoops around and it comes over and it lays over his tail. So I'm going to come from here, kind of where his shoulder would be. I'm going to swoop it around and lay it over his tail. So there's his wing. Now let's go back. Now remember, we have to add that one section of gray short feathers on the back side. So I'm just gonna make a little swooping curve right here to remind me I need to make one section of feathers that are short and that's gonna be the gray section. Then he has another cluster of feathers right here that are kind of a medium length. So I'm just gonna go like this and add a little swoop to remind me those are gonna be the medium feathers. And then all of these are gonna be his long feathers. All right, let's look what else we need to add. Oh, how about right here? He's got a little tuft of white feathers underneath his tail. So behind his body here, we're just gonna add a few little swoops with our pencil. So we've got his body right here, and then that's gonna come up to here. Here his tail feathers are gonna go right underneath his wing a little bit longer. And then we can just add a little bit of feathers right here. And that will be his white feathers. So these feathers here will be blue. And then this little section right here is gonna be white. Now we have to draw his underpants. I know you're thinking, what did she just say? Yes, he has underpants. This little tuft of feathers right there here where his legs are is called his underpants. So we wanna make sure that we give him underpants. So I'm gonna draw a little half curve right here and a little half curve right here. I'm gonna erase his leg out of that little spot. And now he has underpants. Who's that funny? Okay. Let's get ready now to draw the big branch that he's going to be standing on. So if you notice here, this is a juniper tree. So this is another type of berry that the scrub jays love to eat are these juniper berries. So what we're going to do is add a line from his toe here and we're just gonna extend it off the edge of the paper. So I'm gonna make sure it's a little bit below his beak. So I'm just gonna go like this and run it off the edge of the paper. I'm gonna continue this line on this side, running off the edge of the paper. So it's one continuous line. And then I'm gonna decide how wide you want your branch. You can make a little skinny branch, a medium sized branch, a thick branch, it's totally up to you. Now, once we've drawn the first part of our branch, next we're gonna draw some little offshoot branches that come from the main branch. Now on this picture, this branch is running behind his head. I don't want to have anything competing with my bird. So I'm gonna be making that branch a little higher. So all I'm gonna do is go right up here and I'm just gonna make a little branch that comes off the side. When you're drawing this branch, please make sure that that branch is skinnier than this and that it comes a little bit more narrow at the end. You want it to come to a point at the end. You can also add a little mini branch off to the side here. You could draw another one over here. And later we'll add some pine needles to it. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be making more of a pine tree. And they also love pine nuts, by the way. 
So once you've drawn your first branch, you can decide if you want to draw any more. You can draw one behind him. You can draw one coming off the branch here, or you could draw one coming down from the corner. So I think I'll add one coming down from the corner this time. And then later we'll put some pine needles there. All right, I think we are ready now to go in with our Sharpie marker. So when we're using our Sharpie marker, I don't want you just to ink it in really quickly. I really want us to take some time and look at the texture of the feathers. So you can use your marker in a hard line, but you wanna notice that the feathers are very soft. Everything is very soft. So we wanna make sure that we're not just drawing a hard line, that we're actually drawing some texture with our marker. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm going to start with the top of his head. So he's got this little bump right here. And then I'm going to ink the top of his head. And I'm gonna stop right here at the back of his neck. Now, the reason I wanna stop there is I don't wanna draw a hard line right here where those blue feathers are. I wanna make it a little softer. So what I'm going to do is trace over my pencil line and instead I'm just gonna kind of tick my marker very softly across that line. And I'm gonna continue this line all the way to the front. And then I'm going to trace the bottom of his chin. And now I'm going to trace his beak. So very carefully take your time as you're tracing along the beak. And then don't forget that there's that little bump here and then the back of the beak there. Now the next part I'm going to trace is this part of his chest. And once again, I want to make sure that it's kind of soft. I want to make it a little softer, not quite so stiff. So I'm going to add little soft kind of tick marks, super close together. Just kind of ticking it, tick, 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 all the way down, all the way underneath his stomach. And I'm going to stop right here because these feathers get a little bit longer. So now I'm going to make these a little bit longer. Then I'm gonna come to his back. So this top part right here, these are a little bit shorter feathers. So I'm gonna stop right here and I'm gonna trace this gray section of feathers. Remember we talked about that earlier. So that's the, the first section of feathers. And then these next sections of feathers here, these are a little bit longer. So I'm gonna make these lines a little bit longer here. And these are much longer. So this is going to be one continuous line from here to here. And this one's going to be one continuous line. So now in the next, we'll come in and draw all the individual feathers later. We're just going to continue just outlining everything first. So now I'm going to move in and trace his tail. Now his tail is one long line for the feather. So we don't want to scratch it or tick it. We want to just kind of go one continuous line. So I'm going to go from here to here in one continuous motion. And then I'm just going to nice and slow, take my time and draw a few tail feathers following along the same pattern that I did before. Now I have that little section right here, so I'm gonna draw these tail feathers kind of hidden underneath. There. All right, almost done tracing all of the detail. I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna start doing this area here and here, and then we'll work on his eye. So first off, around his face here, he has that mask, and that is a whole different section of feathers, and they're a different color. They're gray, so I'm just going to kind of tick it just like we did before, all the way around to his beak. Then he has a little section right here that separates his blue feathers from his white feathers, and I'm just going to go in and tick that. 
And then that line continues down his chest. So I'm just gonna tick this. And then here, do you see how it kind of feathers into the other? So I'm just gonna tick that. So now I know when I'm coloring, this will be white, this will be blue, and this will be white and gray. Now I'm gonna go in and trace his eye very carefully. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit for you. So you can watch me trace his eye. Okay. So first thing I'm gonna do is trace the top of his eye. And then I'm gonna trace the underside of his eye. I'm gonna trace the side here. I'm gonna trace around that little white highlight. And I'm gonna trace around the little bottom highlight. And now I can go in and either color this with my marker or I could color it with a black crayon or a gray crayon. I'm just gonna go in with the marker right now and just lightly tap it in there. There. Okay, now we're gonna move on to tracing these short feathers right here. So I'm just gonna kind of make a few little gentle marks just so that you know that these feathers are short and then the next feathers are slightly longer. So I'm just gonna tick that area. So those lines are a little bit longer than those. And then the final feathers, let me zoom out, are a little bit longer here. So for these ones, I'm gonna do exactly what we did with the tail. I'm just gonna draw these long lines Like that. And our final part is to continue on to his underpants. I'm gonna make that kind of fuzzy. And then trace over his legs. Now on the back of his leg, that would be where his kind of the joint is, which would be our knee or an elbow. <laughs> I'm going to trace that and then I'm going to trace his feet. Not worried about these lines being perfect as I mentioned earlier. You can always hide the feet by putting a little bit of pine needles in front of it if you'd like to. Once my scrub jay is all traced, then the final thing is to go in and trace my tree. So that it's just a couple simple lines outlining your tree. You wanna make sure that those branches come to a skinny point at the end. And you'll notice that when I'm tracing over my tree branches, I'm not worried about the lines being perfect. A lot of it's going to be changed and covered up when we start painting and when we start adding those pine needles. All right, once I'm finished with that, now we're going to go in and decide where we want to put some pine needles. So to do our pine needles, I'm going to be taking my marker and scratching it very quickly. So if I want to make a cluster of pine needles, I just make a little bump where I want those pine needles to start and I'm gonna take my marker and flick it very quickly. I only wanna do a couple lines with my marker because I'm gonna go back in with paint later. So I'm just deciding kind of where to put those. I don't wanna put one right here that's too close to his head. So I think I'm gonna put it there. See what I'm doing? And I'll add a couple over here. And this is gonna add a little bit of color to our picture too, which will be really nice. And then the final thing is if you want, if you have a little space down here, remember I told you you could put some to cover up his feet, you could draw some pine needles coming up over his feet, or you could just have some coming off the bottom of the paper. 
and we can add some color there. You could put some down here if you want to too. All right, we are finished now with our marker. We're gonna go in with our eraser and erase all of our pencil lines. So go ahead, pause the video, erase your pencil lines and meet me back here. We'll start doing our coloring. Let's begin using our crayons first. So if you have some crayons, we're gonna use this just to get a little color. And we're gonna start with blue. So I have two different shades of blue. I have regular blue and then I have a blue uh, that's a little bit brighter, a little like a sky blue or a blue green color. Uh, I'm gonna mix the two colors together. If you only have one blue crayon, don't worry, that'll work great. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with my lighter shade, which in, in mine is called cerulean. Sometimes it's called blue green. And I'm gonna take that color and I'm gonna start coloring very lightly on the top of his head. And I'm gonna color around the section and then I'm gonna stop right here because a Western scrub jay does not have a solid blue head or a California scrub jay. Then I'm gonna go in and color this little section here. This is called his, his uh, necklace. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that blue there. And then I'm gonna find the other patches of blue. This is gonna be gray. This part of his wing, as you can see, is blue. So I'm going to go in and lay some blue here. I'm leaving a little bit of the paper showing. Do you notice how I'm doing that? And that is because we're going to be painting over this later. And the paint will go in and absorb anywhere where there's still paper. And so you don't want to color super hard. You want to leave a little gap in between so that your paint can adhere to the paper. I'm gonna lay in a little blue on his tail feathers here. I'm skipping that section here because it's white. Just gonna do his tail. And then I'm gonna switch over to my other shade of blue. Now this shade of blue is a little darker. So I'm gonna mix those two colors. And once again, I'm not coloring really hard. I'm just kind of adding a little bit of it. And then I'm gonna paint over this later. Add a little bit over here. His wings. His tail. If I'm going too fast, you always know you can pause the video and then push play when you're caught up. When I'm done with my blue, my next color I'm gonna be looking for is gray. So I have gray crayon. If you don't have a gray crayon, you could also use a black crayon and color very softly with it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of gray here around his eye. And I noticed that he's got kind of this little crease under his eye. So I'm just gonna kind of add a little crease by pressing a little harder with my crayon there. I'm still leaving a little bit of white paper poking through so that way the paint can touch it later. I'm gonna add a little gray to his beak. His beak is gray. And once again, you see that I'm not coloring really hard, just lightly. I'm gonna add some gray to this section of feathers here. And I like to take my crayon and press a little bit harder around the edges. It's kind of like I'm outlining. I'm just pressing a little bit harder. Kind of cast a shadow that way. And then if you notice, he has little hints of gray underneath his chest here and underneath his chin. So I'm just gonna very softly kind of tap my crayon very lightly. I still want it to appear to be white. I'm just putting a few little dashes of gray with my crayon. Not real heavy, just a little bit. Underneath his wing, that's going to cast kind of a little bit of a shadow. And then he's a little bit more gray back here. I'm not putting a lot. See, I'm just kind of tapping my crayon, leaving a couple of marks. His underpants also have a little gray in it. Every time I say underpants, it makes me think he's wearing underwear. 
And then his legs are gray. So I'm going to add a little bit of gray to his legs and his feet. And I'm going to try to be a little bit more careful because those toes are skinny and pointy. And then remember, we're going to be painting over this too. This is just, just an added little texture. It's going to improve our drawing and make it look even more realistic. All right, so I think I've got all my colors in there that I want to do. So now I'm going to move on to my branch. Well, while I have this gray crayon in my hand, I can run a few gray lines down the length of my branch, maybe one or two down these skinnier branches. It's going to make kind of a wood grain look. Then I'm going to switch over to a brown crayon. Now I'm going to do the same thing with brown. I'm not trying to copy the bark on this tree. I really want my scrub jay to show up more than this very gnarled branch here. So I'm drawing a little bit more simple branch. I'm gonna run some brown crayon and I'm gonna kind of focus on the edge of the branch here. So I'm gonna be a little bit more careful when I'm here on the branch. By the way, this in between his toes is also part of the branch. So you might want to go in and pop a little bit of crayon in there. It'll be easier than getting the paintbrush in there later. I'm running a little brown down my branch. My crayon is so dull, it doesn't even have a point on it. So my lines are not gonna be probably as nice as yours. <clears throat> All right, now we're done with that brown. I'm gonna go in with a green crayon. I'm gonna pop in a little green. You wanna make sure you're kind of flicking your hand. Let's get ready to paint. So I'm done with my crayons. I'm gonna put those away. I'm gonna get my paint set ready. So if you are gonna be painting alongside of me, make sure that you've got a napkin. That's gonna be for blotting our paintbrush. I'm gonna leave my napkin right here at the top of my paint set. You are gonna need some water. I'm gonna be using a jar. It doesn't tip over that way. A bowl works great too. I don't like to use uh, paper cups because they do tend to tip over. And the first thing we're gonna be doing is getting our paint set wet because we're gonna be using the water that floats on top of our watercolor set. Now, um, the first thing I wanna do is add water to my lightest colors I'm gonna be using. So for my tree, I'm gonna be using a little yellow. So I'm gonna put a little water on top. You notice I'm just tapping my brush on top I am not stirring my colors. I'm also gonna be using orange. So I've got orange down here. I'm gonna be adding a little water to the orange. I'm gonna be using brown. So I'm gonna be putting some water on my brown. Now I have a darker brown up at the top of my paint set. So if you only have one shade of brown, just put some water to float on top of your brown. So now our, we have all the colors we're gonna need for our, our branch. Now we're gonna do our pine needles. I have two shades of green in my watercolor set, but if you only have one shade of green, don't worry. We can make different shades later by adding blue to the green. Go ahead and add some water to your green. Speaking of blue, our scrub jay has lots of blue in him, so you're going to add some water to your blue paint. Now, I, in my paint set, I have two shades of blue, but my previous set I was working with only had one shade of blue. It doesn't matter. You can change the color of your blue by adding other colors to it. You can darken it by adding a little drop of black to it, and you can lighten it by just adding water. So I've got my blue. I'm gonna need that. I'm also gonna need gray. Now, 
Watercolor sets don't come with gray, they come with black, but we are not gonna be painting with black paint. We're gonna be using the water that floats on top of the black paint, and we're gonna be thinning it in our lid of our paint set. So add some water to your black. I'm putting it in mine now. I know it doesn't show up on camera, but this is black. So now all my colors are just sitting there getting wet and they're starting to soften up. And I'm gonna get ready to start. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is yellow for our branch of our tree. That's our lightest color and that way I don't dirty up my water too quick. So I'm gonna dip my brush into the yellow and I'm gonna kind of twirl it around very softly. I'm painting with the water that floats on top. I'm not painting with the thick paint that's underneath. I'm painting with that water and I'm just gonna brush a few strokes of yellow along my branch. I don't want to paint the entire branch. I'm just kind of placing a couple random spots of yellow on my branch. Later, when I paint the brown over it, it's going to mix with that yellow and make a pretty color. Then I'm going to rinse out my brush, check it on my napkin to make sure it's clean. And I'm going to move on to orange now. So I have my orange down here at the bottom. I'm going to swirl my brush around on the orange. I'm going to take that orange now and run a few marks of orange along my branch. Don't forget in between his toes too. And I'm gonna take that orange and carry it on to the branch. And the little baby branches too. I'm gonna let that color sit there for a minute. I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Now, while those are wet, I'm gonna go in with my brown paint. So I have a light brown and I have a dark brown. If you don't have a light brown, just go straight into your dark brown. So here's my dark brown. Now what I want to do is add a little, make sure that I'm only painting with the water that's floating on top. So you'll notice that my brown isn't really dark because I'm painting with the water that's floating on top. And as I brush it along my branch, you'll see that all those colors are blending together and it's making my tree branch looks so much more natural. It's not just one flat color of brown. It's kind of got a couple different shades in it. It's got some orange, a little bit of yellow, and it makes my brown a little bit more golden, not so flat. Painting in between his toes. Now when it gets time to paint those skinny branches up at the top, I am going to use this leftover paint that's here. So I'm going to scoop it up. I'm going to tap my brush on my napkin so I don't have too much paint. I'm going to hold my brush straight up and down so I can only use the tip of the bristles. And as I hold it straight up and down, I'm very gently going to paint those skinny little branches. You don't really need a lot of paint on your brush to paint them. And by the way, you can paint over the marker line. That's fine. So I'm going to grab up a little bit more of the same color. I've got it right here, this leftover color. And I'm going to paint that other little branch up here. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay if you go outside of your marker line. All right, we're gonna let that color dry. So let's say as you're painting, you end up with a color that's too dark. So I'm gonna do this on purpose. Let's say you went to paint your brown and you just got way too much color and super dark and you're like, oh no, I ruined my picture. Don't worry, you can fix it. All you do is rinse off your brush and your water and then tap it on your napkin, make sure it's dry. You can take your dry brush that you've just tapped on your napkin and it's clean and you can scoop up that color. You can either carry it over and use it somewhere else on your branch. See how I just picked it up and used it somewhere else. Or the other thing you can do is take your clean brush. So see, it's not clean yet. Clean brush, dry, scoop it up like this and wipe it on your napkin. So I can pull any color off of my paper if it's too dark. Usually I just end up grabbing it and using it somewhere else. Now the next color we're gonna work with is our blues. So I have two different shades of blue in my paint set. You might only have one shade of blue and that is just fine. So depending upon whether you have one shade of blue or two, 
you're going to take that paint water. So if you only have one shade here, I'm going to work with this darker shade first to show you. We're going to make sure we're painting with that paint water and I'm going to start right here on the back where his tail is. These are long strokes. So you're just going to start right here. You're brushing right over that crayon and you'll notice that as you paint, it's going to fill in the gaps where the crayon left little spots where the paper is showing, your paint is going to soak into that paper underneath. And I only used a tiny bit of blue paint because you'll see it kind of slides over that crayon because the crayon is made of wax and it resists the paint. So it only is working where it needs to fill in. Now, if I want to make that darker, it doesn't make any sense for me to grab more paint right now and paint it over it. It's just going to make a puddle. Instead, I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to move over and work in another area. And I can always come back later and put a second coat on it to darken it. So now I'm going to grab a little bit more paint. I'm working with just one shade of blue right now. For those of you that only have one shade of blue, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just working with one shade. And now I'm going to go in and paint my wings. This whole section is blue. And this section here is blue. Now notice, I did not grab any more paint. I have enough in my brush that I can go in and feather it into this little part right here. This is his necklace. And I still have almost enough color to go up there and paint his head. Look at that, I haven't even added any more color to my brush yet. I'm gonna need a little bit more, so I'm gonna grab a little bit more. I like to kind of test it on my napkin to make sure I don't have a big drip especially when I'm coming up here at this spot. I'm going to be a little bit more careful up around his head. Now I can go back in. Now that his tail has had a little bit of time to dry, I can go back in and grab a little bit more color if I want to. Tap it on my napkin, make sure I don't have a big drip. And if I want to go in and add another coat, I can make it a little bit darker by adding a second coat over the first coat. So maybe you want to make just a couple of those tail feathers a little bit darker. And I wipe it on my napkin so I don't have a big drip. I can go in and darken. I can kind of darken up here around his head. Feel that second coat's making it look a little darker. Now if you have two shades of blue, you can go in with your lighter shade of blue or your darker shade, depending on which one you started with. And you can add that to add even a little bit more color to it. If you don't have another shade, don't worry. When we mix gray later, we can use our gray and brush that over that area. All right, now we're gonna move on to showing you how to mix gray. And we're gonna be painting in our paint bit. So I'm gonna move my painting aside for a minute. You don't need to do that. I'm just gonna do it so you can see underneath the camera. And I'm gonna put my napkin under here so you can see because my lid is clear, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some water to the lid. So see what I'm doing? I'm just putting a couple drops of water in my lid. So put some water in the lid. Now, the first color I'm gonna to add to this puddle of water is blue. I like my gray to be kind of a cool gray. So you can add a little bit of blue to that puddle of water. Just a little, not a lot. I'm going to stir that around so I've got a very, very pale shade of blue. And now I'm going to go over to my black. This is my black right here. I don't know whether it shows up under the camera or not. I'm going to touch my brush very gently onto that black. I don't want to have a really dark gray, just a light gray. So I'm just touching that water and I'm going to carry it over here to the lid and then I'm going to stir that around. You should be able to see through this. It should be kind of light. So now I've got this nice shade of light gray. I can test it on my paper towel to see if I like that color. See, it's not dark black. That's perfect. Now we're going to paint with that little watery gray color. So this is important. When we're working with this, this area that we're going to be painting gray, we want to make sure we have a napkin to blot our paintbrush on. So here's my napkin. And I'm going to grab a little bit of that gray in my brush. I'm going to tap my brush one time on that napkin to get rid of that first big giant puddle. 
And the first part is the largest area that I'm going to be coloring gray, and that's right here on the back on his back. This is my first shade. So I'm going to go ahead and paint around his eye with this light gray. I'm going to paint his beak very carefully. I'm going to hold my brush straight up and down, paint his beak. And his legs are also gray. So I'm going to paint his feet and his legs with this gray. And now while I have this light gray in my hand, I'm going to go in and start putting some tiny little dashes of light gray, just like I did with the crayon. But you'll notice that the paint is a little different than the crayon. Now I'm going to darken the gray. So I'm going to go back to this black, tap my brush in there, and bring it back over to my water and mix this black into that puddle of water. And now I'm going to make a little bit darker gray. So I'm going to test it on my napkin. I don't want to be painting with black. It should just be a little bit darker gray. There we go. That's a little bit darker. Tap it on my napkin so I don't have too much. I'm going to go back up to this back to the area on his back and put a little bit darker gray there. And I'm going to scoop that color up as I work with it. The color around his face. Scoop that color up. Same color. I don't have to grab any more out of my lid because I have leftover on his back. I'm going to paint his beak. Be really careful when you get to that beak. You want to hold your brush straight up and down. I've got that gray still over here that I can grab. I'm going to paint his lights again. Make that color a little darker and grab a little bit more off that back, off of his face, off of his face right here, his mask. And I'm gonna go in and add a few more little marks of gray with my brush. I'm gonna darken it again. Grab another scoop of this black, twirl it around in that water that's floating in the lid. This color's gonna be a little bit darker, it's still not black, but it's definitely darker. Go in with that color now, tap it on my napkin so that it doesn't drip. Paint that back with that new color. It's a little bit darker. Use that same color on his face. I'm not grabbing any more paint. I'm just using what's left over on his back. Painting his beak, his legs, his feet, his toes. Scooping up that color again. Don't want to leave any puddles on his face. See, I'm just kind of brushing it away. If I've got any extra color, I can use it on his body. I'll paint a little bit underneath his wing. Now, remember I told you you could change the color of the blue by adding gray. So I'm going to go over to this paint water, that gray paint water that's in my lid. And now I can go in and brush a little bit along the tail. So I can darken the blue by brushing a little bit of gray over it. Now you don't have to darken all of the tail. You could just darken one or two of the feathers. You could use a little bit of that gray along the underside of his wing. We are almost done with our painting. Our final part of our painting is to add our pine branches. So our little pine needles. So you're going to choose your green. I'm going to start with my light green first. I'm going to definitely tap my brush on my napkin so that I don't have too much paint. I'm going to be holding my brush straight up and down and I'm going to flick my brush and make some long, quick, little strokes. Now always when you grab your paint, tap your brush on this because we don't want a lot of paint on our brush as we do this. We want it almost dry as we're flicking our brush. And my final color is going to be my darker green. Now if you don't have darker green, what you can do is add a little bit of blue and green together in your paint lid and create your own green color. By adding a little bit of blue to it, you're going to make like more of an emerald green or a blue green. Well, I hope you had fun today learning how to draw our Western shrub jay. 
I love teaching you how to paint and draw and learn about animals. I will see you for our next lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.